Hey everybody, it's Lucidity. Welcome back to Japanese History for Everyone. Today we are starting the first of a seven or eight part series on the Sengoku period, which is also known as the Warring States period of Japan because it's the period where many rival warlords and all the different prefectures of Japan were fighting for power and consolidation of their various areas. Now we did talk about this in a previous video about how it started with my favorite shogun, Ashikaga Yoshimasa, the last real shogun of the Ashikaga dynasty that had full power over a consolidated Japan prior to the Sengoku period. There were people that were in the position of shogun afterwards, but nobody was really listening to them or their power wasn't very effective because of this war and because of the secession debate that happened under Yoshimasa. So if you haven't already, please watch the previous video. It will give you background on how this happened, how we got to this point. It's also very interesting because I love the story of Ashikaga Yoshimasa, the shogun that did not want to be shogun and wanted to be an artist and paint and made Genkakuji and then said, screw the rest of you guys, <laughs> figure it out on your own. Not realizing that it would be pretty bad for the next 200 years afterwards. So with that, we are gonna be talking about the Onin War, which in my opinion is the most unproductive war of all time because there was a lot of death, a lot of property destruction, and absolutely zero resolution in the so 10 or so years that this war went on, which ultimately meant that there would be 200 more years of death and property destruction and lack of resolution. So Ashikaga Yoshimasa is the Shogun of Japan, but he's a terrible military leader and an even worse politician. So like every strict parent's nightmare, he wants to drop out and become an artist. But there's one major issue, and that is that his wife, the shrewd Hino Tomiko, has yet to bear him a son and heir. So he does what anybody would do in this situation, and plucks his brother Ashikaga Yoshimi out of a monastery and forces him to become the next in line to the Ashikaga Shogunate. But in pure soap opera fashion, Hino Tomiko suddenly becomes pregnant, and guess what? It's a boy, and his name is Ashikaga Yoshihisa. So Hino Tomoko isn't really remembered favorably by history, although she's clearly very smart. She's seen as a fairly power-hungry woman, and she knows that if Yoshimi becomes the next shogun, that she's gonna lose all of her status and control over the leadership of Japan, which with a husband like Yoshimasa, she probably already had. So after bearing him a son by completely unsuspicious means, she makes the next logical move and gathers allies to support her infant son's claim to the shogunate over the very much adult Yoshimi. And the man she chooses is a man named Yamana Shozen. But of course, Yoshimi has his own allies, and that includes Hosokawa Katsumoto. So all of Japan essentially splits in half. Half back Yamana and the infant Yoshihisa, and the other back Hosokawa and the ex-monk Yoshimi. But the bulk of the fighting will begin between Yamana and Hosokawa, and it will happen around Kyoto. So the year is 1467, and the war begins with something that will become rather commonplace during this war, a series of arson. First in March, Hosokawa's mansion is burned down, and then in May, Yamana's mansion is burned down in retaliation. This continues through the summer, as one after the other, they continue burning down buildings and destroying other things. Eventually, Hosokawa is forced to rescue Yoshimi right before the palace is taken over by Yamana, and his men bring him back to the Bakufu. In retaliation, Yamana bribes a monk and destroys a temple. And then the two call it off, just in time for the holidays. Or well, at least for the year, until New Year's Day when Hosokawa attempts another attack on Yamana, which doesn't really pan out. So he tries again in April, but that also doesn't pan out. So basically for the next couple of years, a lot of people die, a lot of buildings of cultural significance are burned down, and quite frankly, a lot of buildings that are not of cultural significance are burned down too. But in the grand scheme of things, nothing really happens. No side really gains an advantage over the other, and no one is really winning or losing. So eventually, probably out of exhaustion, Yoshimi surprises everybody and switches sides from Hosokawa to Yamana. And if you thought this would change anything or make things any better, you would be wrong. So although he had intended to name Yoshimi his heir, the fighting had delayed Yoshimasa's retirement. So when he is finally able to retire in 1473, he relents to his wife and names Yoshihisa his heir. So now, since Yoshihisa is technically the shogun of the very fragile Japan, Yoshimi is stripped of his court ranks and labeled a traitor. But then in the same year, both Yamana Sozen and Hosokawa Katsumoto die, and the war sort of listlessly continues on with no end in sight. Eventually, Team Yamana rage quits and burns down their own camp, 
because again, they're probably exhausted. And that brings us to the year 1477, where Kyoto is completely in shambles from a decade of war that ended when they just got tired of fighting. Half of the city's burned down, mobs come in and start to loot, and all the while, our favorite retired shogun is reading poetry and building Ginkakuji. So in the end, there are no winners to this war, but there is one loser, Japan. Because while the Onian War has ended across the rest of Japan, the battles were just beginning. So that's it for part one of the Sengoku period series. In our next video, we're gonna be talking about all the other local wars that were happening in the other prefectures and how that paved the way for Oda Nobunaga and eventually Hideyoshi and Tokugawa Ieyasu who will reunify Japan under the Edo period. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Actually, I found out recently that that doesn't matter anymore, um, but people still say it at the end of their videos, but uh, please stay tuned. I will also be having some modern history videos that I will be peppering in every other uh, video or so that we'll be talking about um, probably concepts that are closer to what I'm researching currently. Also, there are badass warrior monks, so stay tuned.